means area of research includes microwave antennas microstrip and integrated antennas defected ground structures and computer aided design of patch antennas professor sudipta serves as a reviewer of ieee antennas and propagation magazine ieee transactions on antennas and wireless propagation ieee antennas and wireless propagation letters iet microwave antennas and propagation journal uk and international journal of rf and microwave computer aided engineering wiley international microwave and wireless technologies cambridge and also for taylor and francis journal he has more than 80 publications in refereed international journals and international conferences he has contributed in several chapters in different edited research handbooks and also worked as a sole editor in the handbook of trends in the research on microwave antenna in search and communication are cited in different research books as well as in well known undergraduate textbook of antennas and wave propagation by jd cross fourth edition tata micro hill publication he is an associate editor of ieee access wiley journal which is international journal of rf and microwave computer engineering he has been listed in marquis who's who in the world usa 26th edition in 2009 and also listed in 2000 outstanding intellectuals of 21st century uk 2010 professor sudipta sir thank you very much for accepting our invitation your vast experience in the field of antenna design and microwave engineering is definitely going to benefit all the participants over to you sir thank you uh, thank you sir for your kind introduction uh, so uh i think uh, whatever you have introduced it's uh, the you have told many things regarding um, uh, me but the thing is that uh, in this time uh, i did not uh, get much time to prepare my presentation initially i thought that uh, we will discuss some uh, very uh, uh, new things but um, ultimately uh, i could not manage time that is why uh, in today's discussion uh, definitely it will be helpful uh, for as a fdp program because uh, in this talk uh, i have planned to uh, tell the total research results which has been uh, done by my research group uh, in the last 10 years okay so with that uh, i think the uh, the participant and who are uh, interested to work in the field of uh, printed antennas in the specifically in microstrip antenna several avenues they can get and with that uh, avenues they can proceed uh, with some idea so that is the my motto for today's talk and uh, i think we can start our talk uh, am i right uh, dr datta prashad sir yes 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 okay so i am sharing my screen uh, you just uh, let me know whether it is visible or my video uh, in order to save the data okay okay sir will it be problem no no sir we will see the presentation okay yes sir we can see slides okay the slide is okay na uh, yes, you yes. okay so the title of the talk is quest for new research results in microstrip antenna technology uh actually uh, with a brief uh, historical note we are going to start that is in 1953 uh g a d champs uh, first uh, told that microstrip patch can be acted as radiator 
But after that, uh, it took a long time, means in 1972, uh, Professor Howell, uh, he, he basically uh, developed a practical radiator um, based on the concept of the jams. And uh, it took uh, uh, 19 years to realize the importance of such antenna. And that is why it was developed and uh, then characterization was done. And this is uh, basically a most useful uh, antenna. And it is a planar antenna. It is called a patch antenna. And uh, in the just ab above one gigahertz, it is very popular. It consists of metal patch on top and ground, or grounded dielectric substrate. And uh, variety of shapes are there. These are known to, all, uh, known to us. And in general, the classical cavity model is generally utilized for uh, modeling this uh, patch antenna, where we consider the top and bottom wall, which are basically patch and ground plane made up of uh, copper. This is uh, perfect electric walls we, will co we consider. And uh, the four side regions, uh, that is, uh, are basically um, uh, magnetic wall we consider. And uh, this, uh, in this way, it, there is a formation of cavity, and that cavity is basically uh, mm, uh, it, uh, within that cavity there is a resonance of field, and uh, it is just like our cavity resonator. In general, cavity resonator, where we consider that uh, four walls are in uh, very basic cavity resonator, we consider four walls are perfect electric conductor. So here, uh, top and bottom wall are uh, PC and the side walls are PMC. And um, in that way, uh, we analyze this. This is the general classical cavity model. And uh, here, uh, the antenna is basically very thin and space means uh, the distance between patch and the ground plane that is the thickness of the substrate it is quite thin and we consider that there is no variation of electric field as it is very thin okay so that is why we write uh, uh, the mode as tm to z and um, where in the within this uh, cavity uh, uh, which is formed between a uh, top patch and the ground plane and four side metallic uh, conductor uh, four, four side walls which are perfect magnetic conductors uh, so uh, there we generally satisfy the boundary condition and uh, from the wave equation we can solve the thing uh, uh, sorry vector potential equation we can uh, magnetic vector potential equation we can solve uh, for it and uh, where the boundary conditions are, uh, the general boundary conditions, we all know. This is a very basic thing. We all know that the first one is basically the boss law, which tells that the uh, uh, normal component of D is basically discontinuous by an amount of surface charge density at the interface. Otherwise, it is continuous. And the normal component of B is always continuous, and the tangent the third one, uh, and the second one, this normal component of B is always continuous. This is uh, its physical significance. This magnetic monopole cannot exist. And uh, third one is basically the ampere circuital law, modified ampere circuital law, I should say, because uh, here the correction of uh, displacement current, uh, that correction factor has already been introduced. Uh, this is a modified ampere circuital law, which says that the tangential component of magnetic field is uh, continuous across the surface if there is no current passing through the boundary. If there is certain current passes through the boundary, uh, in case of PC specifically, the tangential component of magnetic field is discontinuous by an amount current per unit width. And the fourth one we can uh, we know that is the Faraday's law. That is the tangential component of electric field is continuous across the surface. So these four boundary conditions we need to keep in our mind. <coughs> these are the um, four equations, and these four equations, uh, the, these four uh, boundary conditions are. Uh, utilized uh, to solve any electromagnetic boundary value problems and here the microstrip patch uh, antenna is also a, a bit cavity resonator and uh, for analytical purpose we need to use this uh, boundary condition and uh, then we are coming to the um, uh, another uh, concept that is the in case of uh, 
micro strip patch antenna uh, when we will uh, what i said that the top and bottom wall are, are basically the perfect electric conductor and the side walls are perfect magnetic conductor so here uh, one the, 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 the term magnetic conductor it is uh, a bit confusing uh, sometimes so it is basically some fixes um, uh, parameters we generally introduce like uh, magnetic quantities which are basically that is the magnetic conduction current magnetic charge magnetic displacement current magnetic conductor so these are basically introduced if we see the aperture theory of antenna we, we are we will become quite familiar with that and um, yeah, general maxwell's equation is we know curl of h is equal to j plus epsilon del e del t and curl of e is equal to minus del b del t means minus mu del h del t if we uh, look here in the first First equation you will find that uh, these two equations are analogous just in order to maintain the analogy instead of j we have introduced minus m so this m is basically the magnetic conduction current this is the magnetic conduction current and uh, this is the electric conduction current uh, this is electric displacement current and with the analogy of electric displacement current we call it as magnetic displacement current mu del h del t okay so uh, these are basically the um, uh, equation these two equation are basically you see these are uh, defining uh, the characteristics of two different variable one for h one for e but the equations are of same form so definitely it is following the duality principle and based on duality principle we can say the electric field and the magnetic field uh, electric current density j and the magnetic current density m Displace, electric displacement current density magnetic displacement current density these um, are basically uh, these are basically uh, or, or, or all are all the two equations are of same form and they are e parameters which are uh, which are situated in an identical position these are the dual parameter so you can say j and m these are the dual quantity e and h are the dual quantity uh, this is uh, one thing uh, and second thing is that uh, whenever uh, we are using the um, magnetic relation between the magnetic field and the electric current there is uh, the positive sign curl of h is equal to j plus epsilon del e del t uh, while whenever we are using the uh, new equation curl of e minus m minus mu del h del t here there is a negative sign means from here you can understand the magnetic field and the electric current they are basically following the right hand rule while the electric field and the magnetic current they are following the left hand rule okay and the uh, magnetic vector potential a electric vector potential f f is new vector potential electric vector potential which is basically the function of the magnetic current m so uh, these things i have told because this uh, whenever you will um, study the uh, whenever we will try to analyze the microstrip patch uh, there in the cavity we need to consider the magnetic currents at the four side walls equal magnetic currents at the four side walls so these magnetic currents these are basically the fictitious magnetic currents and these fictitious magnetic currents are very useful for analytical purpose for uh, radiation problem and uh, mm, these are uh, all the fixtures but they, with the help of this whenever we uh, characterize any antenna at the time uh, the result beca res result is uh, in a very excellent agreement with the measurement results so we have no other way except accepting this uh, fictitious parameters okay so uh, next, uh, this thing is known to us that uh, J is equal to N cap cross H. This is known to us. And following the duality, we can write M is equal to minus N cap cross E. Just uh, following the dual relation, J and M are dual quantity. N, H and E are dual quantity. But uh, one thing keep in your mind, just in the previous slide, what I said, that the magnetic field and the electric current they are following right hand rule while the electric field and the magnetic current follows the left hand rule and therefore this minus sign has come in the next equation m is equal to minus n cap cross e now uh, another another uh, summary thing what i should say that uh, when we deal with the electric conductor electric and magnetic currents uh, we use 
then the boundary condition of vanishing electric field should be considered while uh, we deal with the magnetic conductor for electric or magnetic current then the boundary condition of vanishing magnetic field should be considered okay so these things are known to us but these are just review because uh, these things are useful for your uh, analytical purpose when we will analyze the uh, patch antenna uh, although we will not analyze here today but uh, my motto of this talk is to uh, show the avenue so that you can uh, start the uh, work on this uh, field also uh, so these things are required and uh, then we are coming to the uh, plane radiation mechanism of uh, the patch antenna where uh, the length of the patch is lambda by 2 uh, and as it is a lambda by 2 it, it, it is uh, seen that the uh, fringing fields uh, at the radiating edges Pending fields at the radiating edges, they are out of place. Now, if we uh, break up into two components, one is vertical and another is horizontal, it is said that the horizontal components are in phase which can produce the broadside radiation. And this broadside radiation are uh, basically the characteristics of uh, uh, characteristics of uh, your patch antenna radiation and uh, patch antenna radiator is called as broadside radiator mm, uh, and uh, whenever the current flows from uh, along the length of the patch it is basically exciting a dominant mode pm10 in case of rectangular patch and it produces a broadside radiation when the current flows along this longitudinal direction now Now, this is a, from the very basic concept that if the electrons are moving um, from one point to another, it is accelerated, then there is a uh, more dense electric field is uh, at the um, broadside section than the axial section that we know and we can get it from relativistic electrodynamics and uh, from here you can understand that the radiation must be along the broadside and uh, whenever we consider the charges are accelerated along this direction then some electric field component which is uh, like this uh, this horizontal component and this is basically the uh, radiation field which is radiated in the broadside direction and therefore the electric field which is uh, radiated from your uh, simple patch antenna this is polarized uh, along x polarized in this figure uh, you see the current is flowing in in this direction so uh, it is along uh, x polarized um, electric field you can get the current is flowing in this direction so electron movement will also be along this direction this is uh, similar to this and you can see that there is a, a horizontal component of electric field these two are the radiating edges uh, from this figure you can understand these two are the radiating edges as it is the length of the patch and this is basically the width of the patch the main the main radiation occurs from this radiating edge and this radiating edge that is why these are called radiating edges while these edges this edge and this edge are basically the non radiating edges where there is uh, uh, from there the radiation generally do not take place okay at least in case of dominant mode in case of dominant excited mode now, uh, the feed uh, should be along center line, which you have seen that here the feed has been introduced at along W by 2. Uh, it is done in order to just suppress the higher order mode. Higher order modes basically the cause uh, for the cross polar radiation. As such, the microstrip antenna is a linearly polarized radiator. And I, uh, in the you know, I, you know, our last uh, slide, this slide, we have seen that the electric field which is uh, radiated from the patch, this is X polarized. Okay, so linearly polarized, X polarized. Definitely, we do not want any radiation which will be Y polarized. Okay, so Y polarized radiation, if X place, that is basically the cross polarized radiation. Now, the feeding equation, the feeding uh, of uh, uh, patch antenna equation is R H cos square pi x0 by L. What is x0? x0 is basically the uh, distance from the edge to the uh, feeding position. And uh, age of the patch uh, resistance is RH. It is generally typically uh, 150 to 300 ohm in general. Uh, 
here in a specific case which i have shown here uh, it is uh, around 170 something like that anyway but the uh, thing is that as you are moving uh, towards the center as you are moving towards the center from the edge you will find that the uh, input resistance decreases definitely uh, somewhere it some, somewhere in between the edge and the center of the patch we must be having certain point where 50 ohm is available so that will be the point of optimum uh, feeding position Now, in general uh, cases, uh, one thing is there that whenever the patch is uh, working on a very thin substrate, uh, at the time, mm, uh, what happens, the current which is flowing through the patch, it is basically uh, cancelled by the uh, ground plane as top plate means patch and the ground plane. These are very close together. Okay. So therefore, uh, they are uh, they typically, uh, ideally, um, you can consider that uh, the image and the source, both are cancelling each other and therefore uh, there will be no radiation. But it is not true because uh, whenever uh, it is working in a thin substrate, uh, working on a thin substrate at the time, your cavity becomes very small. Okay and this basically uh, increases the q factor and uh, it means that the q factor resonance is quite strong and the current is uh, quite strong and uh, therefore it it balance basically it balance that uh, effect okay effect of nullifying the source and image distribution and uh, mm, uh, effectively it can radiate well now <coughs> the main parameters of microstrip antenna which has uh, the main issues that is the first resonant or operating frequency input impedance uh, estimations uh, and in case of input parameters these two are the very important parameter and then the radiation parameters like antenna gain antenna radiation pattern cross polarization etc so in general the basic structure we know that uh, this is a, a simple uh, rectangular microstrip antenna where uh, we have introduced an ear between the substrate and ground plane uh, and uh, because of the fringing fields uh, the fringing has been uh, extended in uh, all the patch periphery and uh, therefore the effective length has become l plus 2 delta l and effective width becomes w plus 2 delta w and um, uh, uh, so the resonant frequency can be obtained from uh, the equation that is c by 2 l plus 2 delta l root over epsilon r effective okay epsilon r effective has come up because uh, whenever the fringing occurs uh, at the time um, it is uh, found that your lines of force that is the electric fields these are partially um, from your uh, partially in the ear and partially in the dielectric so therefore effective dielectric constant must have to come and uh, in this case when uh, when the ear has been deliberately introduced between the ground plane and the uh, electric substrate there uh, another uh, again uh, there is a question of effective dielectric constant so this is a very important parameter uh, and uh, in the uh, approach in the recent approach what happened that uh, uh, instead of considering the um, uh, fringing along length if you look at this resonant frequency formulation you are finding that uh, your uh, effect of delta l has been taken delta l is the fringing length uh, which has been uh, occurred along longitudinal direction in lateral direction the concept of delta w it is not considered okay but here in our case uh, what we did uh, we actually consider uh, the fringing in all the direction because from general common sense that if we uh, suppose uh, if we consider the patch as a uh, patch antenna as a cavity resonator suppose we have um, launched certain electromagnetic energy within the patch whether it is resonating longitudinally or laterally definitely the discontinuity occurs at all the edges not only the radiating edges therefore at the non-radiating edges also there is a maybe less but still some fringing must be there 
and that fringing should be considered in order to calculate uh, the accurate resonant frequency, fringing field, etc. And these are very helpful for uh, these uh, accurate estimation of delta L if we can do, or delta delta W if we can do, then we can also find out different uh, parameters of addition parameters also. <coughs> now, uh, fringing along non-radiating edges has been considered uh, for the first time um, uh, by our group. And uh, in this case, uh, the epsilon R effective uh, because of the, uh, of the substrate height and air gap height. Uh, these formulations, you can get it in the uh, uh, journal uh, where we have published the work that is Microwave Optical Technology Letters 2009. Uh, the, we have uh, for follow, for following the concept of uh, the, uh, Jackson. Jackson's uh, one very um, uh, good paper is there, uh, D. Jackson's um, on microstrip antenna. I cannot remember the year exact, but in IEEE uh, transaction on paper was there, where uh, it was uh, told that the uh, equivalence relation may be established between different geometries of the patch uh, to find out the resonant frequency. Uh, following uh, Jackson's approach um, for circular and rectangular patch, we started the work and the equivalence relation has been formed and uh, then the effective uh, circumference um, when we equated between circular patch and the uh, rectangular patch, we have got uh, the delta L is basically like this. Delta is L is basically like this, and F R M N, uh, the re resonant frequency will be like this. So here, one thing, delta W has been formulated like delta L 1.5 minus P, and this uh, mm, uh, delta W delta L relation here you uh, consider that here this delta W which we have. Uh, Found that we have put here, and uh, and whenever we put it here, this delta L which we have calculated within this delta L, the contribution of delta W is also there. So concept of um, contribution of delta W has been taken into account by modifying the expression for delta L, and accordingly the F resonant frequency can be calculated, and um, this resonant frequencies are quite accurate. Uh, then other formulas and lot of formulas for resonant frequency you have found uh, you, you will uh, see in different journal papers if you go through the book of Galbatia, if you go through the book of DM Poser uh, and uh, the last uh, uh, the last uh, Hammerstead formula and the James formula was uh, very much authentic, um, but after our this uh, formulation extra after um, uh, working with this formulation, we have found that in every cases, in many cases, we have uh, used this formulation and these formulations are uh, giving us a very uh, good result uh, for every cases, which are uh, is in excellent agreement uh, with the measurement results in every cases till now what I found and uh, these are uh, far better than Hammerstead and James formulation. Uh, so now we are coming to the uh, effect of air gap height means what I said that between substrate and ground plane air gap may be introduced so it is found that if air gap is increasing the resonant frequency also increasing and then decreases and uh, um, uh, this is the case of air gap and this is the effect of substrate thickness the substrate thickness as increases the resonant frequency decreases and uh, this is the effect of aspect ratio. Aspect ratio means effect width to length ratio of the patch. It is in that as the um, uh, as we increase the W keeping L fixed. In general, we know the resonant frequency mostly dependent on L. However, the effect of W is there. So it is found that uh, um, uh, the for fixed length, if we change the value of W aspect ratio that means width to length ratio changes and width to length ratio changes means uh, 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 the resonant frequency also changes okay 
so this is the the um, uh, the, the formulation which uh, i have uh, forgotten to say this formulation which we have uh, derived here uh, so in this formulation it is found that the fringing lengths are uh, um, uh, derived in such a way the higher order modes frequency also can be predicted very accurately with this formulation okay so based on those formulation the uh, theoretical graphs have been drawn and uh, other some simulated some some measured results uh, here it is shown mm, uh, this is the thing and then we are coming to the input impedance part and the input impedance the basic formulation from d jackson uh, you can get this formula uh, this formula is uh, uh, known to us and uh, this is you know if uh, this is a patch it is a profit patch here this black section this is basically parallel resonance circuit this is parallel rlc circuit parallel rlc resonance circuit and uh, the input resistance as a function of peak position we can compute in this way and uh, in iet microwave antennas and propagation 2009 you can we can get this uh, derivation of all these things and um, here the one factor is the quality factor 1 by qt well effective is equal to 1 by qt and qt can be obtained from 1 by qr plus 1 by qc plus 1 by qd inverse and qr qc qd we all know that is the q factor due to radiation loss conduction loss and dielectric loss and um, mm, uh, these losses can be uh, computed uh, q factor due to radiation loss can be obtained from here here the uh, references are given so with these references uh, can be useful for uh, investigation for further investigation or uh, to uh, work on the those things uh, characteristic impedance of uh, the microstrip geometry zr can be like this can be like this where epsilon rn can be obtained as epsilon r effective plus 1 by 2 in order to con consider the concept of air and then the equivalent conductance gr can be obtained from this equation qd is like this i am not going into the depth of the mathematical steps because um, whoever is interested the references are given so with the reference you can move forward okay so the input impedance as a function of frequency this is a very uh, the car the profile for the plot is uh, very known to us and this uh, profile is uh, for in general for antenna is having this sort of uh, input resistance and uh, input uh, reactance characteristics and here just um, in order to show the formulation is in um, uh, very much uh, good agreement with uh, the uh, 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 with the uh, other uh, others theory or uh, simulated result like that when the case is there is no air gap when there is a 0.5 mm air gap in these two cases we have found now uh, depending on feed location uh, the input resistance definitely changes what i said earlier also one slide i have shown the, that the at the age there is a um, uh, uh, input resistance is quite high and uh, at the central point the input resistance is zero uh, ideally zero but basically very low and uh, so in between the age and the Uh, central point age and the central point there will be the uh, <coughs> 50 ohm point where we need to uh, uh, which we need to find out uh, for feeding it as optimum feed location now um, uh, effect of variable air gap height is also there it is found that uh, when the air gap height uh, is increasing air gap height means uh, which has been deliberately introduced between uh, substrate and ground plane so it is found that the radiation resistance increases okay and uh, uh, for aspect ratio the variation is like this means when keeping length fixed w increasing the resonant resistance uh, basically decreasing in this manner okay decreasing in this manner and um, uh, this is uh, for air gap case for without air gap case in all these cases it is found uh, and uh, effect of w by l on matched location also if you uh, look at this right side plot this plot then you will find that um, for w by l 1.5 it is 
it's like this for w by l1 w by l 0.7 these three are the graphs suppose we are uh, trying to find 50 ohm point so 50 ohm point is basically here for for 1.5 w by l the 50 ohm point will be at this point but for w by l1 it will be here for w by l.7 it will be here so means it is basically moving towards the center okay so as or in the other words um, we can say as w by l increases we need to move from the center towards the edge so to reach the 50 ohm point for a higher value of w by l we have to move more from the center towards the edge okay these things we need to keep in our mind and uh, these uh, discussions which i have told in a brief that is the effect of w generally we do not consider uh, in case of resonant frequency determination input impedance determination but during my investigation during my research activity i have found that these minor variations it creates a very big changes in the theory as well as the um, obtained results or uh, some in some new innovations also in some new uh, structure also these uh, knowledges are required and they are, if we can apply those things uh, these things then uh, you can analyze in a more better way so that is why we have discussed this last few slides and um, then we are coming to the case of higher order mode and in this higher order mode uh, here uh, for the L30 millimeter patch where the substrate thickness is 1.575 millimeter and 50 ohm point uh, means at the optimum point we have fit. Uh, one question is there in uh, in the book of uh, Gar Bhal Bhatia, you will find that uh, the cross polarized radiation is basically uh, uh, the cross polarized radiation is basically minimum when width to length ratio is 1.5 but if you go through different literatures, different books, different um, research papers also, I have found that some paper, some people, uh, they are claiming that it is not true that for W by L 1.5 uh, uh, polarization purity is the maximum, it is not true. Some, some, some has told that it is uh, very good for W by L 1. Some has reported that for W by L 1.2, so there is a big confusion I faced personally that uh, what to do means with which aspect ratio we will start our investigation. <laughs> initially, <laughs> initially when I saw that uh, the, whenever we are uh, basically uh, trying to excite our uh, antenna, for different W value means in other word, this will be giving us different uh, W by L. So there it is found that the probability of development of higher order mode, excitement of higher order mode, means which we call automatic excitation of higher order mode. It is prominent when W by L1, okay. And in other cases, there is a possibility like W by L 1.7 dark yellow, W by L 1 that is black, W by L 0 0.7 that is blue, W by L 1.2 that is magenta. So these colors from here you can see the dominant mode all are excited at a same frequency that is 3.05 gigahertz. Okay, but there is a possibility of automatic excitation of other higher order. Now, if you carefully follow the red graph, red colored graph, the red colored graph that is basically it is above 10 dB. All the all the uh, dips, all the S11 dips are above 10 dB. Means uh, we can say uh, there is a possibility of automatic excitation of higher order mode is less is 1.5. And this is the reason we know that the cross polar radiation is basically uh, originated from the higher order mode resonances, automatic excitation of higher order modes, automatic excitation of rather I should say orthogonal higher order mode. So uh, if there is a probability of excitation, automatic excitation of orthogonal higher order modes are less, 
then definitely we can conclude that for W by L 1.5, cross-polar radiation probability will be less. Now, uh, basically, let us see what is the case that radiation from non-radiating edges are basically responsible for the patch, uh, for the uh, for the cross polarized radiation. Okay, so for the cross polarized radiation, uh, let us go to earlier slide. Suppose this is a patch. If you look here, this is the patch. This this is length. So this is a radiating edge. This is a radiating edge, and these two are the non-radiating edges. Okay, these two are the non-radiating edges. So from here, the electric field which is this polarized means along x polarization, x polarized fields are the copolarized field. While in this figure, if I consider that z, z is in this direction. So z polarized field is basically the cross polarized field. All right. So Basically, these cross-polarized radiation are originated from non-radiating edges. So we can consider in non-radiating edge, here in this side and here in this side, two slot antennas are there, two slots are there. From that, those slots, the non-radiating edges radiate certain signals. All right. So if that is the case, there is a concept of array factor. There is a concept of array factor of two elementary. Two elementary means uh, two slots are along the non-radiating edges. Uh, we consider a patch with fixed L, mean, means fixed length, produces maximum XP at the H plane at a certain angle alpha. At a certain angle alpha, at a particular angle, the H plane maximum takes place. In general, it is around 40 to 50 degrees. But uh, it is not sure that always it will be along 40 to 50 degree. It depends on the length of the patch that I have found. So um, noting the value of alpha, we can find the uh, typical value for the aspect ratio means W by L. It is found that from the two non-radiating edges, if we consider two slots, their array factor is like this, which is dependent on the length of the patch. And uh, here, uh, if this will be minimum, this array factor will be minimum when P becomes like this. Okay. So if that is the case, it is found that for L is equal to 30 millimeter, we can say that the alpha is basically, we can just check uh, through simulation that alpha is basically, alpha means uh, where the maxima from the horizon, at what angle the maxima takes place, means it is 90 minus both sides. Okay, so at that angle, 40 to 50 degree alpha, it is uh, 40 to 50 degree va value, there is a maxima for L is equal to 30 degree. In that case, in that case, if you look in this left side graph, so here you can see uh, near 1.5, the copole to cross pole isolation is very good. Copole to cross pole isolation is very good. Okay, so uh, for when the case alpha is equal to 40 to a uh, maxima, cross polar radiation maxima in H plane, it peaks near 40 to 50 degree. You can say that W by L 1.5 is good. But you look at here, uh, when L is equal to 20 millimeter, H 1.575, XP peaks at 36 degree. Okay, so this, this this simulation is not has not been done by me, but it is uh, from the over uh, electronic letters uh, 1987. Uh, so it is 36 degree. It is the measured value. So uh, there we have found um, that uh, in that case, when at 36 degree 36 degree elevation from the uh, from the horizon. There is a maxima for H plane cross pole. In that case, the cross pole level is minimum when it is H W by L is 1.24. So blindly, I should not say that always W by L 1.5 is basically the gives best result for CP2X. Although we write, although we write till today also, I also write sometimes in the paper that W by L is uh, most uh, good performance we can obtain at W by L 1.5. But it is not only for cross-polar radiation, uh, from the point of view of the bandwidth also, it depends on W by L. 
okay so that is why 1.5 is generally uh, standard however w by l 1.2 1.31 is all are useful so, depending on the angle alpha where h plane xp picks uh where we can determine the value of w by l and where the xp picks h plane xp picks it depends on the length of the patch and the frequency now you are coming to the antenna gain enhancement technique and in the antenna gain enhancement technique different techniques are there one is uh, the uh, you, you see the if we uh, use a low dielectric constant substrate <coughs> or if we use a composite type substrate in those cases uh, the gain of the antenna can be enhanced so in general, in conventional microstrip patch with PTFE substrate, which is the most standard, it gives 5 to 6 dBi gain, if it is brought right. But the gain enhancement is very much important. We all know it is required. So this is a disadvantage of microstrip patch, although low profile. But uh, although it is a very mm, low profile antenna, very thin antenna, it is planar antenna, but still it's uh, low gain feature is not at all good so gain enhancement is an important issue for microstrip antenna or any planar antenna and uh, the latest approaches are basically the use of ptfe substrate uh, uh, replacement by ear then gain increases around 8 dbi gain can be obtained or you can use a composite substrate means there is a mixing of dielectric as well as uh, ear substrate it is there uh, and uh, these are basically but, but whenever we use the air substrate or composite substrate one lacuna is there that lacuna is basically the cross pole radiation increases cross pole radiation increases as such basically whenever we are using a low dielectric constant substrate or you are you are using a composite di uh, dielectric substrate means where there is a, a mixing of uh, general dielectric as well as air in those cases the effective dielectric constant of the substrate decreases and as it decreases your electric fields are loosely bound beneath the patch which can produce radiation this in one side it helps in radiation in the broadside direction and that is why gain increases but it radiates the uh, cross polar radiation also means different polarization radiation also takes place from the non radiating edges <coughs> so different uh, when we use air or ptfe substrate then we can change we can see the changes in radiation <coughs> changes in radiation we can see you see, whenever we are using the air substrate, in that cases, the beam are quite broad in H plane than the E plane. But in any case, either E plane or H plane, the gain of the antenna is high in all the cases for air substrate. Now, if we see the field distribution over the substrate, we can understand that uh, if it is an uniform dielectric, uh, then the electric field distribution is like this. When it is an uniform air, <coughs> electric field distribution is over the more wider area, which can be uh, told, which can be attributed for your gain. To estimate the higher gain, we can uh, use this formulation because uh, if we consider that the effective aperture of the radiator as L plus 2 delta W, W plus 2 delta W, then using the fringing length equation delta L and delta W, we can find the uh, enhancement of gain, and this enhancement of gain is around 3 dB for air substrate in comparison to conventional PTFE substrate or L12W18 millimeter patch.
where h is equal to 1.59 millimeter and here is the prediction predicted value and the uh, uh, computed value mm, uh, it is found that the predicted value is some over prediction is there but it is quite less not too much the scale is small that is why it is uh, showing quite a uh, big gap is there but uh, the overestimation is around 0 0.3 db now radiation pattern improvement means uh, the with the high gain if we can broaden the beam in general uh, when the gain is high the beam is uh, automatically it will be narrow but if we can wide if we can make the antenna beam wider then it is definitely an advantage it is found that instead of air substrate if we use a composite dielectric substrate where mixing of air and ptfe substrate has been taken place <coughs> in that case the beam becomes more wider beam becomes more wider and the gain also becomes very high <coughs> see this is the structure this is the microstrip patch with air substrate and this is the microstrip patch with composite dielectric substrate so here it is found that in case of composite substrate the gain is high like your air substrate as well as its beam is quite wider so if you look here you will find that the e plane beam is getting broader what is S by L? If you look here, S is how much portion of your patch is taken up by dielectric. This part is dielectric. This part is air. Okay. This part is air. So S by L 0 0.75 is the optimum uh, insertion can be taken up to which the insertion of dielectric can be taken place. Carefully see this figure. There is a broad white beam we can obtain, and here also the radiation characteristics. If you see, we will find that in comparison to here, the composite substrate is having consistent white beam, while gain is also similar in both the cases. When it is compared with simple PTFE, it is found that the beam is broader as well as gain is high. So the composite substrate is having very good feature and this can be useful uh, here. Now, uh, if we see the field distribution, the first one is uniform PTFE, second one is uniform here, and the third one is here PTFE composite substrate. There is a typical type of variation noted in case of air dielectric composite substrate, variation of field distribution. And this field distribution is quite non-uniform distribution, I can say, in comparison to the two left pictures, means where the uh, uniform distributions have taken place. But here, this non-uniformity in distribution, this may be attributed for wider beam width, okay, in both the E and H plane, in E plane as well as in H plane. Now, other composite structure means uh, here the uh, from both the sides the dielectric can be introduced. However, one thing I can uh, uh, tell that this insertion or with uh, if we are inserting the dielectric beneath the patch or it is withdrawn uh, the, from the uh, patch region, then what happens? from these figures whatever it is shown here you can find that uh, the as the air content beneath the patch increases air content beneath the patch increases it is found that the gain also enhances okay <coughs> and sometimes uh, it is uh, it can be done also with the here with the help of micro machining technology if we can uh, extract the region beneath the patch and uh, we can consider there is an air and the other sides are dielectric means patch is on air cavity if there is a air cavity then it is found that the synthesized uh, permittivity of the substrate 
is quite low and synthesized permittivity of the substrate is quite low which basically helps in enhancement of gain as well as improvement in front to back ratio so uh, microstrip patch on ear cavity means this is also one kind of composite substrate technology where ear cavity has been made beneath the patch it is found that for all aspect ratio cases uh, the front to back ratio is improved much as well as gain also increases gain must be increasing because in our earlier slides we have understood that as the ear content beneath the patch increases the gain increases so because of that and front to back ratio improvement is also there because as although the ear cavity is there uh, that is why the gain has been increased but the diffraction which is basically occurred from the edge of the ground plane so this can be minimized with this uh, type of technique and uh, which results in um, good uh, improved front to back radiation ratio so these things uh, we have already seen now we are coming to the cross polarization issue of microstrip antenna in cross polarization what i said earlier the radiation from non radiating edges radiation from non radiating edges are basically the source of cross polar radiation and these are basically it is told that uh, it is a very established fact the second higher order orthogonal resonance means we know that in case of uh, conventional rectangular microstrip antenna the dominant mode is tm10 mode and uh, that uh, and the orthogonal higher higher order mode that is tm02 orthogonal higher order mode that is tm02 mode uh, this is basically primarily responsible for cross polar radiation this tm02 mode is basically um, becomes uh, strong at the non radiating edges and from non radiating edges the radiation which is taking place that is the cross polar radiation and it is uh, quite prominent in h plane and uh, it is quite prominent in h plane but uh, we are not worried about the e plane uh, cross polar radiation e plane cross polar radiation is in generally always low and uh, h plane cross pole is quite problematic okay now uh, the cross pole minimization technique uh, are basically the this is the earlier work which has been done that there is a modification of patch structure or stacked patch uh, cp2 xp isolation means copolar to cross polar radiation isolation of 19 db can be achieved the, but the most more modern and popular techniques are use of dgs or dps and another useful technique is use of shots now this is a, a, a tm10 mode rectangular microstrip antenna red color arrow is basically the electric field polarization of our copolar radiation this blue color arrow this is the orthogonal polarization which is basically they developed from orthogonal higher order mode and this blue color arrow is basically the cross polar radiation your polarization of your blue color electric field is crossed to your um red color copolar electric field and these are the cross polar radiation the source for xps are unwanted radiation from the probe um and the matching is also an important issue the xp radiation the fringing field from the non radiating edges are also the cause for xp uh, the, uh, these are prominent due to the next side of the tm02 mode few radiations are due to orthogonal component of dominant mode the xp level increases means cross polarization level increases when substrate thickness increases as well as value of dielectric constant of the substrate decreases okay and if the thickness increases then uh, not only cross pole level increases there is a problem of distortion in radiation pattern there is a sharp null which is uneven which can be for, uh, which is um, obtained in most of the cases and this is basically due this is prominent in case of probe fed patch because the uh, because the feeding probe works as a monopole and because of that this uh, sharp null comes in one side of the e plane the cross polarization i have already told these things uh scientists and researchers have started to address the issues h plane during the last few years now 
see here that the um, uh, XP fields uh, uh, see the here this is the rectangular patch where these black dots these are the strong field for the dominant mode and there is a weak field okay this hollow circles these are the weak fields okay so the fringing from here is not contributing in radiation this is the ideal case for tm10 and for tm02 mode the things are different here the strong fields are there and there are weak fields and these strong fields are definitely this will uh, give birth to y polarized electric field rather than x polarized electric field so this is the cross pole all right this is the cross pole and uh, for tm10 if we see the variation it is like this the copolar fields they are in phase they can produce broadside radiation but for tm10 mode this and this this cosine variation if it is an ideal symmetric cosine variation the radiation from this side should be cancelled by radiation from this side radiation from this side should be cancelled by radiation from this side but practically we can see later we can see later that um, yeah, it is not true this cosine variation is not uh, proper it is uneven therefore the upper section and the lower section field distribution are not uniform this is non uniform rather it is non uniform and because of non uniformity tm10 mode that means own dominant mode of microstrip patch can produce cross polar radiation okay for the time being take it granted tm10 mode is not uh, 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 not the cause of cross pole but the practical fact i have already said this uneven uh, means uh, non uniform variation of cosine variation tm10 mode is also responsible for cross pole but for the time being you think that tm10 is not for the not uh, responsible for cross pole rather tm02 mode is responsible for cross pole this thing okay so this is the popular belief that uh, tm02 mode is basically responsible for cross pole but um, we have found that tm uh, the cross pole is basically due to own dominant mode this proof we have got okay the proof of this we have got anyway so this is the basic magnetic current uh, diagram you can understand what i said that uh, these two sides can cancel each other these two sides can cancel each other while this and this can radiate uh, these are radiating edges non radiating edges are along the width and y z plane is basically here the e plane x z plane is basically the h plane here now these are the typical radiation for e plane and h plane microstrip patch antenna and uh, if we uh, look at the principal plane then the 3d diagram for cross pole is like this but uh, if you come down in this in this figure this a and b you see these two lobes are basically along the 45 degree means along the diagonal plane along diagonal plane cross pole is quite high but because of shortcoming of our measurement facility the diagonal plane cross pole we address very less the issue of diagonal plane cross pole we address very less so this is the thing where you can work also that diagonal plane cross pole minimization this is a very important topic okay so the fit position is w by 2 we keep uh, that i have already discussed now if we are coming to circular microstrip antenna we will find that the um, tm11 mode is the dominant mode and here also the next higher order orthogonal resonance which is tm21 in case of rma means rectangular microstrip antenna i said that tm10 mode is the dominant mode and uh, the first higher order orthogonal resonance that is tm02 but here we will see that in case of circular patch tm11 is the dominant mode we all know and its next higher order orthogonal resonance is tm21 so that tm11 and tm21 uh, this tm21 is basically the responsible for cross polar radiation in circular patch antenna now earlier efforts has been given by modifying the feed structure and the probe feed here uh, one thing you can the uh, main thing is that Uh, with the modification of feed like this or like this it is seen the 
this vertical section and then this vertical section these two are 180 degree out of phase the radiation from these two are 180 degree out of phase the length has been designed in such a way either in meander line field or in this l shaped probe the radiation from two vertical sections they are 180 degree out of phase and thereby cancels each other so one reason i told that the uh, unwanted radiation from probe produces cross pole so that can be minimized with this technique okay and uh, use of stacked patch is also there but however i have found that with the use of stacked patch we cannot get a very good result around uh, 16 17 db cross polarized uh, cross polarization level we can obtain but uh, we need uh, more um, better cp2 xpi isolation now w shaped ground plane or cupped ground plane can be useful for uh, lowering the cross pole level uh, but uh, the other techniques are Uh, the shorted patch concept with which is fully shorted patch or discrete shorted patch and uh, and uh, second type of technique is the employment of defected ground structure and third type uh, is use of defected patch structure so this is basically the shorted shorted patch technique uh, in case of shorted patch technique you can uh, get it in ieee aps magazine 2014 uh the detail analysis i am not going here the two non radiating edges are shorted and because of two non radiating edge shorting the field distribution becomes like this the field beneath the patch becomes like this this is for conventional patch for tm10 mode but this is for shorted patch so here there is a variation minima maxima minima along the width so here the mode is tm11 here the mode is tm11 but here the mode is tm10 so because of tm11 mode definitely the resonant frequency increases in case of shorted patch which is against of our uh, era of miniaturization but still the result is quite good wherever it is required that the cross pole should be very much low so at that time the shorted patch consideration uh, should be considered because there is a excellent minimization excellent improvement of cp2 xp isolation of around 30 db um i have uh, uh, done a lot of work on this cross pole minimization but this was the although it's a, it is earlier work but still it is the most effective separation i have found with this shorted patch stick although the uh, disadvantage is that its frequency is basically getting increased and then if we consider the mm, uh, discrete shorted patch uh, means uh, instead of uh, shorting the whole non radiating edge we have discrete shorting plates are utilized so in these cases Uh, uh when we do it it is found that the cross polarized radiation is basically um, improved but along with that we can get the higher bandwidth also so this is another effective technique where we can use the discrete shorted patch technique and in case of discrete shorted patch we have found that in from the non radiating side the electric fields are quite less you see look at here the electric fields are quite high in the non radiating side red color while in the case in the case of discrete shots when we have incorporated it is red and green hey, sorry it is yellow and green so it is quite less so we can minimize the radiation from non radiating edges at the same time we can increase the uh, impedance bandwidth also it is you see carefully look at this uh, table this time I, I um I, i i'm not taking or uh, not talking anything you just uh, see what is the effect and see the uh, red colored line okay so as we are increasing as we are increasing the um, uh, as we are increasing the uh, d1 d1 means basically the uh, this strip width strip width as we increase d1 this strip width then we can found that the um, bandwidth 
increases and increases up to 1.5 and at 1.22 gigahertz bandwidth can be uh, we, we, we can get that is around 10 percent bandwidth although not very much uh, worthy to note but still uh, the bandwidth has been increased from six percent to ten percent the discrete shot is a bit better okay so this is uh, the case of uh, discrete shorted patch and then we are coming to the defective ground structure technique and in defective ground structure technique in the for the circular patch it was uh, first um, taken up by uh, ymm enter and uh, professor digua and uh, they are um, they have utilized for circular patch the defective ground structure where ground plane slots are cut here we can see the dot type slot and the arc type slot has been cut and then um, uh, for a rectangular patch we have done for uh, linear slot and uh, then for uh, the bracketed uh, slot uh, dgs also so then um, around 25 to 20 db uh, polarization purity has been achieved with that different type of dgs geometries are there which can be useful now, uh, whenever we are using this uh, slot in this left hand side, you see the slot is quite larger. Slot is quite larger uh, than the patch length. All right. This must. This is very much required. Why required? Because this slot is can be considered as complementary dipole antenna, and which should be even um, even means uh, even multiple of half wavelength. Which should be even multiple of half wavelength. Why it is? Because the microstrip geometry and the slot, the, uh, these two are coupled with this equation. Okay, Z0 microstrip by Z0 slot. Uh, so this is the coupling factor. Now Z0 slot from the Babinet's principle, we can say it is squared by 4 ZD. And uh, here you see when uh, we are using the when we are using the um, uh, dipole antenna of even uh, multiple of half wavelength, it's um, uh, it exhibits large value of uh, input impedance. So, which makes Z0 small slot smaller, and Z0 slot smaller means it increases the coupling factor. So, if it is the coupling factor increases, the fields will be trapped. PM02 mode field will be trapped, or the higher order mode field will be the trapped. And then only, uh, then only the T the effect of TM02 or 01 or uh, more or less uh, what I should say the orthogonal resonating field that can be trapped within the slot. It can in, it can enhance the back radiation, but um, it can reduce the cross polar radiation. So that is why it is generally uh, even multiple of half wavelength, and that is why it is quite larger. And it is found that for um, the L12 W18, 49 millimeter slot length is required for slot type BBS, and for L10 W15, 38 millimeter is required. Okay, and uh, this is the thing. And uh, these are the result there to back radiation definitely it will increase what i said that as the slot length uh, changes then uh, front to back radiation isolation deteriorates and then uh, we are coming to the dumbbell type dgs uh, in case of dumbbell type dgs uh, the um, this uh, dumbbell section you look at this figure this bar down figure here the term a is having very significant uh, um, uh, contribution here if we just keep it uh, just at the age this dumbbell type dgs if we just keep it at the edge then the result will not be good we have to introduce beneath the patch then only we can get the optimum result so that can be uh, if you if, if we follow this uh, publication we can uh, get it vividly the result and um, this is the mathematical thing uh, which is all are in detail in publication mm, so uh, it is found that the expression for A is half W plus 2 delta W minus 2L divided by what over epsilon R effective 0, 02. If you follow this, then you can find that the uh, TM02 field will be properly trapped within the slot 
and slot becomes resonant, ground plane slot becomes resonant. This can enhance the back radiation in terms of copole as well as cross pole, but it can reduce effectively um, the cross polar radiation in the uh, lower elevation angle, means near the bore side region. So whenever you see, whenever this um, is, uh, look at the right side figure, uh, in the right side figure for TM02 mode field, we have just examined what is the scenario in these slots for TM02 mode field. When it is kept just at the edge, when it is entered following the equation which I have shown in the previous slide. You see, this is a fully resonant slot while it is not. Okay, so whenever it is fully resonant, we have found that the cross polarized radiation also most low. And this is the important thing. So we have to uh, put it inside beneath the patch. Now, the orthogonal component of dominant mode, which I was telling uh, that uh, in case of, uh, in case of uh, 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 generally, it is a popular bill if I told that the TM02 mode, that is the higher order orthogonal resonance is a primary source for cross pole. But uh, we have seen that the own dominant mode, that is TM10 mode, this is also the, um, uh, responsible for cross pole radiation. So, cross pole radiation means I should say this is heavily responsible for cross pole radiation. So, now you see that uh, JS is n cap cross H. The field distribution in general case is like this for dominant mode. The current flowing path is like this. Ideally, we draw it like that from lower to uh, from lower edge to upper edge. It is totally longitudinal. We consider, but because of uh, this feeding probe, it is like this. And as a result, uh, the magnetic field locus will become like this. And because of this, the electric field locus will become like this. So it's detailed mathematical explanation. You can get it in IEEE Access 2018 paper. Mm, uh, here we have not introduced that part because I could not manage time, as I said early. Uh, so what I say <coughs> that um, here, uh, ideally, there is a cosine distribution for TM10 mode. There is a cosine distribution for TM10 mode. Uh, this is, if it is even distribution, means if it is symmetric, then this part is cancelled by this part. This part is cancelled by this part. But practically, it is not so. Look at this figure and this figure. You can understand. There is a, this cosine function is not uniform. And therefore, there is a net effective radiation. Horizontal radiation takes place from the non-radiating edges which are basically the cause of cross pole. Okay, so this is the thing. So by uh, eliminating the uh, this variation, by eliminating the variation, by modifying the path structure, the cross pole can be minimized. Another type of DGS technique is like this, where the circular headed dumbbell DGS has been useful. Instead of rectangular headed dumbbell, circular headed dumbbell DGS has been useful where we can have, uh, we, we can get um, uh, many good characteristics. That is, um, it is having low cross pole, uh, good gain, good gain as, as well as the bandwidth. So these three are the very important issues. These three issues can be um, tackled with the circular headed dumbbell DGS. So why this change? Because whenever, uh, depending on the DGS geometry, the um, uh, field beneath the patch will be modulated. And if we can efficiently modulate the field uh, at the radiating edge as well as non-radiating edges, the cross pole can be minimized, gain can be enhanced, as well as because of this defect, incorporation of defect, some loss, change in loss in the cavity will also be there, which will affect the Q factor. So this will basically the um, uh, basically uh, affect the bandwidth of the antenna. So this can be obtained uh, with a circular headed dumbbell DGS structure. It is not in tabular form. If it could be in tabular form, then I could show you that what is the improvement. How far I can remember with this structure, around 9 dBi gain we obtained 
22% bandwidth we obtained and cross polar level was around 23, 24, 25. So very good results we got. Okay. <coughs> So, uh, problem with VGS is basically <coughs> the back radiation and <coughs> one minute. X P radiation suppression is. <coughs> mainly occurs in the broadside region at the cost of elevated uh, backside cross polar radiation in case of DGS structure. Narrow bandwidth is also a limiting factor for DGS structure and uh, defects is extended beyond the patch periphery which can be the restriction for array structure. So these are the shortcomings for DGS. Therefore the DPS uh, attempt can be made in case of DPS, circular path and rectangular path, these two structures are there where we can successfully reduce the cross pole. <coughs> At the same time, there is a um, miniaturization of the antenna also. Uh, we can get it in the, the detail analysis is given in uh, Microwave Wireless Technology, Cambridge European Microwave Association Journal. So here also you see the current distribution has been made um, longitudinal uh, by changing the geometry of the patch. And miniaturization also takes place. You see, if you see the S11 dip, the left hand side is this is for proposed case. This is for conventional case. So miniaturization takes place. And if you look at the cross pole behavior, blue and red you see the cross pole behavior is also very good this is another dps structure uh, where the rectangular headed dumbbell dps has been employed on the patch that these are basically a dipole these are basically a uh, dipole uh, monopole complementary dipole we can consider in that way we can analyze analysis i'm not going it is in IEEE AWPL 2016, uh, where 11 percent bandwidth can be obtained. So here also cross pole is quite less. These things we have got, and then uh, a very interesting result we have got with uh, another structure, which is a composite microstrip monopole antenna. So where uh, with the uh, microstrip patch, the monopole has been incorporated. And monopole is basically three lambda by four monopole, and where you, when we have uh, computed the uh, uh, when we have computed the radiation pattern, it is found that it can give a very interesting result. Means uh, along with the high gain low cross pole, it can give wide beam along with the flat top radiation. Along with the flat top radiation, flat top radiation is quite problematic. So uh, first of all, the mathematical steps I'm not going. Here, uh, with the distribution of field, uh, you can understand the cross pole can be minimized here. More uniform distribution are taking place between lower and upper half section of the patch. This is done with the modulation of the field beneath the patch. And then you see the flat top radiation of around 72 degree flat top range has been obtained. And uh, the gain is also very high. We have found that around 9 dB gain we have obtained. The directivity formulation is there. If you uh, get time, you can see the quasi planar composite microstrip monopole IEEE access 2019. Uh, so, there we have uh, uh, mathematically uh, we have calculated uh, all the things um, uh, where it will be clear that uh, how we can get the, um, uh, this uh, flat top radiation. And as such, in physical uh, way, if we can try to make you understand that we have utilized a monopole antenna that is 3 lambda by 4 and 3 lambda by 4 monopole is having higher elevated low. This higher elevated low has been merged with the conventional rectangular microstrip antenna low, main low, broadside low and therefore it gives a 
proper flat top radiation with the wide beam grid, beam width, uh, so, uh, flat top radiation, wide beam, and with high gain as well as the cross pole is quite low. So then, uh, how much time is left? Sir, uh, we have yeah, five, yeah, five o'clock. Okay, please, okay. Please continue, sir. No problem. So there is one question by uh, Mr. Yeah. Jeet. Uh, okay. Can, uh, address the question and then continue. So continue yeah, and at the end we can take the question, sir. No problem. Okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Is it okay? So uh, next we are coming. Uh, uh, see, uh, sir, the thing is yes. that uh, yes. your time yes. is uh, four minutes left. But yes. uh, if we see, I think this is uh, another avenues. Uh, I think we can uh, complete here because yes. the another avenues uh, which is circular sector microscope antenna. So this is uh, another big portion. Okay. I think we cannot uh, cover that part fully. Okay. Yes, so sir. I think uh, this is mostly I have discussed about the uh, rectangular patch, cross polar radiation, these things. And uh, this uh, circular sector, this is another new area, uh, microstrip antenna. Uh, but this part we have not discussed. So here we can stop, I think. Or, uh, yes, what sir, we can ask. A uh, few participants to ask questions. Like there is already one so, question. Uh, uh, hello, participants. Uh, can you tell me that uh, shall we go into this circular sector microstrip antenna or we will stop here? My dear participants. Hello. Uh, participants, you can uh, reply in chat box or unmute and tell. Uh, meantime, uh, sir, there is uh, there are two questions. One by Mr. Jeet. He is asking most of these outcomes are valid only for probe breeding. Can we use composite subs, uh, substrates for micro strip uh -huh. feed or CPW feed? For, 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 for strip feed, no? for other type of feed. No? Yes, sir. Okay. So actually, whenever you are for the composite substrate, the probe feed is useful. Uh, but the, for the steep uh, for the steep line feed or any other type of feed, you have to uh, in this S by L 0.75 which I discussed. So that part may not be useful because uh, you have to fabricate the strip. All right. So that strip line is to be fabricated in such a way so that it will not harm your uh, feeding. Means uh, if you can feed it in the opposite side of the uh, well. In uh, the side in which there is a substrate is there, you can print the strip line. There you can use. We have not seen it for strip line fit, but we have. We can check it. Okay, this is the thing. Okay, sir. Now there is one response by uh, one participant. He says you can continue. Uh, the, before okay. that, uh, Raghavan sir wants to know. Uh, mm -hmm. Inform the exclusive advantage of uh, DGS. Hello. 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 Yeah, actually, sometimes your voice got cut. I do not know whether okay, okay. this yes, is my yes, network sir. issue or your uh, network issue. Okay, 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 sir. Uh, sir, there is another question by Raghavan, sir. Hmm? Uh, uh, sir wants to know, uh, can you inform the ex exclusive advantages of DGS? Exclusive, uh, uh, advantages of DGS, though? Yes, Hello? sir. Yes, yes okay. sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, advantage of DGS is basically DGS is a technique for uh, we, we have seen that the cross polar radiation minimization was taken place earlier also but with the help of uh, modify modification of patch structure feed structure ground plane etc so modification of ground plane as uh, as we have seen the W type ground plane or cup ground plane this is quite problematic to design all right Second thing is that whenever we have utilized a meander line feed or the L shaped probe, these also problematic. If we are not using the ear substrate, this meandering line, meander line probe or L shaped probe, this is quite problematic to feed. We can realize it. So, therefore, uh, 
<coughs> if we can, in a very simple way, if we can use uh, DDS, means there is a simple slot in the ground plane. So uh, the, if this can handle our purpose, if, if this can address the issue, then I think it is uh, very much um, helpful for minimization of cross pull point of view. But we should keep in our mind whenever we are using DGS, some disadvantages are also there. Disadvantages, what are the disadvantages? The back radiation is a big disadvantage. All right. And another thing I have found that the antenna uh, matching is also creates problem. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. So, right. um, shall we continue more, or uh, we will uh, stop here? Uh, participants, I would like to know from you, uh, sir. Are you going to share uh, your PowerPoint presentation, sir? Mm. Possible for you to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can continue. Okay. So, so I am just. Uh, you can continue. Okay, okay. I want to know from more uh, participants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. But please. nobody is answering. No, no, no sir. <laughs> anyway, uh, so circular. Okay, in brief, I am just in a nutshell. I am telling. Yes. Okay. In a nutshell, I am trying to tell. So uh, this is visible, no, my screen. Yes, sir. It is visible. Yes, Okay. So uh, CSMA is basically the uh, circular sector microstrip antenna. Okay. CSMA is basically a circular sector microstrip antenna. And uh, this is a very important, uh, uh, important means this is a very uh, new thing uh, which we can uh, consider. This is not the proper circular microstrip antenna. Instead, one sector of circular uh, geometry has been chosen for investigation and it is found that whenever the circular sector has been chosen uh, it is found that it can give a more sometimes more better result than the conventional established circular patch so uh, that that is why uh, this csma is a new area of investigation but uh, as the geometry is a bit uh, different type means geometry is a bit complex if you can uh, think for uh, its uh, theoretical design so it is quite problematic and that is why mm, uh, it is uh, means uh, it is uh, not uh, fully in use uh, but uh, it is uh, uh, we have to uh, explore it more okay then uh, after that a case study has been shown here and then um, uh, we will conclude now this is the part of the circular sector is taken up and this part of the circular sector um, is uh, here from this figure you can uh, see and uh, you see here uh, rectangular and circular geometries are the most common geometry as it is uh, well established and uh, as it is well established and um, its theory is known to us but circular sector microstrip geometry its theory is not fully known and that is why we uh, do not uh, use uh, more popularly so that is why this uh, exploration of csma is very much important uh, but uh, the, some occasions must be there because we are moving through the era of miniaturization. So this circular sector microstrip antenna is having miniaturization. Huge miniaturization can be obtained, and um, with uh, huge miniaturization can be obtained, and uh, that is why uh, this CSMA can be useful for uh, this circular sector microstrip antenna can be useful for uh, miniaturization. So if you, we are in urgent need to know its theory. Uh, so here, when we try to design the choice of sector angle, first of all, the which sector angle you will choose. You can choose 30 degree sector angle, you can choose 60 degree, 50 degree, 45 degree. So this is an important issue. And estimation of dominant mode resonant frequency uh, for this, then choice of fit position, and then taking radiation pattern and polarization. Okay, so this is uh, the theory, which is uh, the theory part. I am not going into the depth. You can get it in International Journal of Arabic and Microwave Computer Aided Engineering, 2018. Mm. 
and the dominant mode can be calculated with this such and such uh, relation and the whenever we have tried to uh, develop this resonant frequency it will be like this and uh, the equations are frs chi m and c divided by 2 pi a s root over epsilon r this is for circular sector resonant frequency for circular microstrip antenna resonant frequency is the right hand side 1.84 c by 2 pi that will be ac there is a sorry small mistake this will be ac root over epsilon r ac and as are the radial dimension of csma and cma and csma so the equivalence relation has been established and from here, we can see that when phi zero greater than pi means if uh, is, uh, uh, the circular sector is greater than 180 degree, then what happens? Uh, your m value, the mode value is less than one. So here, the mode is a fractional mode. Keep in your mind, the mode is a fractional mode. In the, your uh, mode can be TM 0 0.51 your mode can be 0 0.21 your mode can be 0 0.71 like that the m value is less than one so chi m and dash is less than 1.4 1.84 and consequently the circular sector uh, radius is lesser than the uh, um, conventional circular patch so area of circular patch is greater than the circular sector area and whenever phi zero less than pi, whenever it is uh, lesser than semicircular path, chi m is greater than 1.84. And in that case, m is greater than 1. But keep in your mind, this can also be the fractional value. See, the value of m is obtained from q pi by phi zero. So from here, we can say m is equal to q pi by phi zero. If phi zero is pi by 3, pi by 4, pi by 2.57. So any value can be obtained. For different sector so m may be fractional so fractional mode is obtained in case of sector microstrip antenna so that is the complexity here but if we can uh, explore the theory it's uh, theory of this thing more then it is uh, very much uh, interesting thing but in, in any case whether pi zero less than pi means the sector angle is less than semicircular or greater than semicircular the area of sec circular sector microstrip antenna is lesser than the circular patch area okay so which is very much helpful for employing within a tiny device okay so here this graph you see uh, whenever we are using uh, a circular sector whenever we are using circular sector here you see 30 millimeter radial dimension the patch ready sorry the radial dimension uh, is 30 millimeter this red color okay it is kept fixed and the angle is changing this is phi phi zero means sector angle is changing correspondingly look at this green graph graph green plot the resonant frequency initially fixed then suddenly jumped down and then as the and sector angle is increased beyond 60 degree then it is gradually going down and down all right now uh, whenever uh, if we are compare it with the circular patch this black graph this initially for exciting the fixed frequency of this amount the around 3.6 or 3.7 definitely circular patch radial dimension must be constant and then as the frequency is decreasing circular path radial dimension starts to increase right so here uh, this start th this crossover is happening when phi zero is equal to near 180 degree so here you see compare red color graph and black color graph you will find that whenever the circular sector angle is less than 180 degree at that time the in order to excite a particular frequency the radial dimension of circular patch is lesser than the radial dimension of csm the case is totally opposite when we are going pi zero greater than 180 degree there you see the to excite a particular frequency suppose this frequency we need larger value of radial dimension in circular patch 
smaller value of radial dimension in CSF. All right. So, in terms of radial dimension, it is better to use a circular sector microstrip antenna, which is greater than 180 degree. But one thing also you need to note that if the circular sector microstrip antenna is greater than 180 degree, at that time, uh, the uh, the, uh, the associated circuitry in the electronic equipment chassis it is problematic to keep uh, beside the antenna. So therefore, it is better if we use less than 180 degree from the point of view of the area, uh, from the point of view of the general scenario. And as far as area is concerned, the antenna area always low in case of CSM. All right. So that area factor is uh, shown here. Here you can see the percentage reduction of patch area. So around 60% of patch area reduction is possible here and here, but here only 20%. Okay. Now, then we are coming to the choice of feed location. In case of feed location, you see for different up to 60 degree, 15, 30, 45, 60, the excited mode is TM01. If it is excited at site, excited mode when fade along phi is equal to zero degree line, that means along the edge. And this is the excited mode along the central symmetrical line. So in all cases, the excited mode is TM01. The case is different when the circular sector, you, you see, whenever it is fade at the central line, whenever it is fade at the edge, the mode is same. Okay, that is TM01. But whenever uh, 110 degree to 60 degree in this range, you see, whenever it is fade along the uh, edge, at that time, the mode is this. While whenever the same antenna is fade along central line, the mode is this. Okay. The detailed discussions, you can get it in IEEE Antennas and Propagation Magazine 2020. Okay. Uh, this is done by our group and uh, this thing uh, you can get there. Mm, the detailed analysis and discussions. Uh, now I am not going into the more detail. Uh, it will take much time. So uh, there also another group of uh, sector angles is 110 to 180 degree. So there also we have found uh, that the uh, whenever it is fade along the edge at that time, the excited mode is like this. So this is the dominant mode. But if the same antenna is fade along central line, at that time, the mode becomes the M value. M indices becomes double 1.53. 1.38, 2.76, 1.28, 2 2.56, like that. So that is why mm, it changes. Okay. So it becomes doubled. So its um, figure is given. So accordingly, the standing waves are also there. So whenever it is uh, fed along the central line at that time, it is oscillating along x direction. Whenever it is um, fed along the age line it is oscillating along y direction so in both the cases the polarization of the field is different okay these are the important thing and leave this matter and the radiation pattern for a case study is 90 degree csma uh, you see the e plane and h plane uh, copole and cross pole radiations one important interesting thing that uh, your cross polar radiation in H plane, it is having bore side profile, broad side profile. It is having broad side profile. This is a very uh, problematic thing. The broad side profile cross pole is not at all advantageous. It is disadvantageous. It will be a proper, create problem in your main beam. So this is a challenging thing <laughs> to modulate the uh, broad side profile of H plane cross pole for 90 degree CSM. And uh, here, whenever it is fade along uh, it, and this earlier case, this is for the dominant mode. It is along edge fade. Okay. But whenever it is centrally fade, what I said, the mode has been changed. It is no longer dominant mode. It is higher order mode, TM01. In that case, you see this green color graph. The H plane cross pole is having conical pattern. It is satisfied. It, it is okay. But Keep in your mind, this is higher order mode. Whenever you are trying to design a 90 degree CSMA, your intention will not be to exciting this TM01 mode. Rather, you should excite TM21 mode, which is the dominant mode. 
TM21 mode is the dominant mode is 90 degree CSMA. Dominant mode varies from sector to sector. Okay. So this is the case. So this is another uh, work pending which you can do for 90 degree CSMA. For 180 degree CSMA, we have already done the modification of uh, this broadside profile of XP, which will be coming up in 2021 IEEE AWPL. Mm, so this is not here. So this is, I think, uh, I have, I hope that I have conveyed you the um, things on which you can work. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Mm. Uh, participants, uh, I'll be sharing uh, yeah. one minute with you. Uh, I think there are 20, 23 participants. If you have any queries, you can post in the chat box yeah. or you can shoot and ask directly. Uh, Sudipta, sir, I think it's now uh, 520, so everybody is. Mm. Yes, I yes, understand. Sir. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, then. Uh, it was a wonderful session, sir. Very okay, if anybody is interested, if anybody is interested, you can provide my mail. They can communicate yes, with me also. Yes, sir. And okay. uh, sir, there is a possibility that fa fa the faculty member participants uh, um, ask uh, presentations, sir. Uh, PPT. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. That I can send you. Yes. Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. That uh, I and also I want to take one uh, consent, one permission from you uh, mm -hmm. online. Uh, like, uh, is there any uh, consent mm -hmm. issue from your end to upload this recorded video on YouTube? Okay, okay. You you are uploading it, na? Yes, sir. Uh, it has Hello? been asked by uh, Atal, but they are not. And it is mandatory. If a speaker or organization has uh, issues that like they don't want to uh, upload it publicly. Okay, okay, okay. I have no problem. No problem, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, once, uh, once again, uh, on behalf of uh, the Atal Academy, the Institute, Gokte Institute of Technology, and all the participants, I thank uh, Dr. Sudipta Chattopadhyay for uh, uh, giving a detailed insight on, especially on the research result uh, oriented uh, explanation on microstrip antenna technology. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Namaste. Namaste, sir. So, may I leave? Yes, sir. Yes. May I leave? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>